Today on BRS TV How To Tuesday, we're going to show you how to select the right sediment filter for your water supply. Hi, I'm Ryan, host of BRS TV How To Tuesday. This week we're going to show you how to select the right sediment filter for your RODI system. Believe it or not, this cheap polypropylene filter might have the biggest impact on how your reverse osmosis system performs long term. Seems impossible because it's really only designed to remove suspended particulates like dirt and sediment. However, by reducing the volume of suspended particles, we're going to improve system performance in a variety of ways. First, by using a quality sediment filter, we're going to capture the suspended particles before they have a chance to follow the much more expensive carbon blocks and membrane, which will significantly lower the operating cost of running the RO system. More importantly, selecting the right sediment filter will reduce the pressure drop. Every filter we add to the system will result in a loss in pressure feeding the membrane. Proper pressure is really important to proper membrane performance, and low pressure is easily the most common issue when an RO system is not performing well. A brand new high quality sediment filter will have very little impact on pressure. However, as they get clogged, the pressure drop will start to increase and if you select the wrong size and neglect changing them, the suspended particles will pass through the filter and clog the much more expensive carbon blocks, which will further increase the pressure drop, reduce system performance, decrease the carbon block lifespan, and increase overall operating costs for the RO system. So it's pretty apparent that proper selection and replacement schedule is pretty important for this really inexpensive filter. So how do you select the right one? Well, the first step is to select the right micron size. The micron size is the average size of the openings in between the spun polypropylene. For example, the openings are larger in a five micron filter than a one micron filter. That means that one micron filter is capable of capturing more suspended particles than a five micron filter, which would lead you to believe that it's better, and in some ways it is. However, it's also also going to clog faster, which will increase pressure drop and reduce system performance. So there needs to be a balance here. Sediment less than 5 microns is really not all that common, so in most cases a 5 micron sediment filter would be suitable and a good balance between performance and longevity of the filter. If you're looking for the best possible performance and don't mind changing the single filter out a bit more often, or really want to protect the more expensive filters like chloramine carbon blocks, a 1 micron sediment filter might be the best option. However, there's another option which can make this easier, which is called a depth filter. A legit depth filter has a true graded density, which means it might have a couple hundred micron size on the outside and slowly get tighter and tighter as you get to the center. This translates to a longer life and fewer change outs than a standard sediment filter. However, there are various qualities of depth sediment filters. Most of the imported versions claim to be true graded density, but our testing has shown most are fairly questionable as their effectiveness as a depth filter. And they're much closer to a single density filter. Luckily, for the most part, there's a really easy way for the average reefer to evaluate a filter for themselves. Higher micron ratings will be lower density, which will result in a much more spongy, softer feel to the filter. The common imported filters are typically rock hard and have almost no give to them, which like likely indicates very little gradient to the density of the filter. GE produces a higher quality depth sediment filter with a true graded density here in the USA, and the difference can be felt with your hand. With their Puretrix brand, you can feel the filter softer almost immediately. It has a woven feel to it, and there's some flex to the filter when you squeeze it. GE also produces a premium filter called the ROSAVE.Z, which has a larger void volume and specifically designed for use as a pretreatment filter for reverse osmosis systems with optimal performance and filter longevity. You'll immediately notice the filter just feels different in your hand and has a graded density you can literally feel as you squeeze it. And there's an obvious flex to the filter created by the larger void volume and the graded density of the filter. The result is up to 50% lower pressure drop, which increases membrane performance and the filter is capable of capturing up to twice as much sediment and suspended particles, which reduces the need for filter changeouts. If you're looking for the optimal performance balance with as few changeouts as possible and a low pressure drop, the 1 micron ROSAVE.Z is likely the best choice. Beyond all that, it's always wise to look for the NSF seal, which ensures safety and quality of the components used to produce the filter. The process of getting the NSF seal adds legitimacy to the manufacturer. 
So overall, my suggestion for most reefers is to start with a one micron graded density filter and see how long the filter lasts before they have a significant drop in pressure. If the filter lasts a long time, stick with the one micron. If the filter clogs quickly, try a five micron and monitor your carbon block lifespan. If your carbon blocks clog quickly, you likely have fine silt in your water supply and should go back to the one micron filters and just accept that you need to change them more frequently. If you have any experience you want to share with your other reefers or questions for the community, check out that comments area down below. If you haven't already, hit that subscribe button because we release new videos now twice a week, every Tuesday and Friday. So see you next week with another episode of BRS TV.